I never walk out of any movie, no matter how bad. <laughs> Two consecutive sentences and I'm saying, and then what happened? You know, I get hooked on the story. Yet I walked out of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes because I was embarrassed by her, because she was a joke, she was vulnerable, she was um, so eager for approval. She was all the things that I feared most being as a teenage girl. And ultimately, I, I, I walked out. But it wasn't until the women's movement came along much later in my life that I realized that we had to look at the why of those feelings. It wasn't that we made them up. It was because we lived in a society that made women feel vulnerable. If the artificiality, the role, the stereotype, the sex goddess is what you are mostly rewarded for, it's extremely difficult to let it go. You have very little assurance that you're going to be loved and salaried <laughs> as your real self, as your unique underneath self. There isn't even now much evidence of, of, of female human beings being rewarded for that, though there is lots more. But there was much less in the, in the 50s that formed Marilyn. What, what makes her so riveting for women, especially since the advent of the modern women's movement, say 35 years ago or whatever, is that we wonder if we could not have saved her by making a place where she could tell everything, because that's what we've done for each other. And since we didn't have, and especially Marilyn, whose mother was in a mental institution, but since a lot of us had mothers who were driven crazy by society or who just couldn't be powerful be, n through no fault of theirs, the society wouldn't let them be powerful. In some sense, we were motherless. What the women's movement has done is to allow women to become each other's mothers and to support and model and hope and praise and love each other enough so that we can begin to repair the, the early damage. So we, we wonder, all of us, if we could not have saved Marilyn's life.